So how many people, this was the first fish bowl they attended? It seemed weird, right? What a waste of time. Yes? It's another interesting format of conducting meetings and we wanted you to experience that and maybe some of you might want to try this at your workplace when you have important issues to be debated. It's an interesting format to look at, right? So it's something to think about. Uh, these are all different formats that you can take back as little tools that you can try at your company. So we, I insisted we go with this because, you know, there's some learning in terms of the format itself. Now, there were interesting topics as well, which is bonus. But the, the core is to help understand the format, right? So with that, we'll try and close the conference. And I hope uh, this was a fruitful two days of your investment uh, for you guys. How many people here use the law of two feet? That's fantastic. Almost every single person, right? Does that tell you something about the conference program? It was lousy. I had to use the law of two feet because I couldn't find the meaningful sessions. Too many interesting sessions. Only if we could clone ourselves. Well, the point I was trying to get at with that question is there were quite a few people who came up and gave feedback about specific sessions not being good and things like that. And some people also appreciated, or the same people also appreciated, certain sessions which were really good. Right? You take any conference, no matter which conference you go to, there will always be a mixed bag. Because when we look at, we're all uh, relative, we, we only think in terms of relative. So when you look at a conference, you have certain speakers, you're going to try and map them, and you're going to say, well, that was really good, and this was bad, and you know, we'll always try and compare that. So that's going to happen, which is why the law of two feet is there for you to utilize that, so that you could find sessions which are interesting. Now, a uh, little bit about how the sessions are selected. What happens? I mean, how many people are aware in terms of why these speakers came here and spoke? What happened before this? How many people are aware of what is happening before we, the speakers are here? The blog? Voting? Voting, that's a myth. <laughs> So there is a call for proposal that goes out. There is an open submission system. People go in and put submissions. I don't remember the exact number, but we had around 100 or maybe over 100 proposals that were submitted. And it's an open system, which means you can see who the speaker or who's the person proposing the session. There's a pretty detailed format that they fill out, which talks about what is the abstract, what is the outcome, what is the outline of their session. Uh, videos of the past sessions that they have performed, slides, and so forth, right? And then we rely on the community to go in and put comments. You can leave comments. You can uh, ask for clarifications. You know, you can do that. And then you can also vote for topics. You can say, yes, I like this topic. Now, the voting is interesting because we know people game it. And the intention of putting that was so that people can game it. It's a marketing tool. It helps us market the conference, right? Uh, but more importantly, there are people who genuinely go put in comments and things like that. And then we also have a review committee. I showed the six people on the stage earlier on when I did the opening talk. So the six people, we had multiple calls. We would go through these, uh, the, the proposals and we would look at the proposals and you know, we would vote for them. And then depending on the six people, what the voting is, we would pick certain sessions. Right? So that's the thought process that goes behind it. Uh, and, and as a group of uh, people interested in the conference, you can help us make this better, right? Because six people can only do so much, right? But if everyone contributed in terms of asking questions, asking clarifications, I think it would overall improve the process. It would improve, it will help the people who are proposing the topics. And maybe it will motivate you to go in and put a proposal as well, right? So we have called for proposals for Agile India 2015, which is our big conference uh, that we run every year in Bangalore. And that's right now up there. So if you feel that uh, you want to either add a proposal, you want to contribute in terms of giving feedback to other people, you want to ask clarifying questions, please go ahead and do that. You can find that on 2015.agileindia.org. Right? That's the site. And from there, you can find the rest of the details. But uh, that's the thought process that happens before speakers get selected. 
Uh, now you can go back to the proposal after you've attended certain talks, right? And you can go back now and you can add comments over there again. It would help the speakers in terms of, okay, this is how I could improve. Quite a few people were really honest. They came up and they gave feedback. And I was seeing that happening with a lot of different speakers. So I was really happy that that was happening. Now you could, if you were not able to speak to someone, if you were not able to give that feedback, please do go into the submission system and put in. And they'll get an email the moment you put in a comment. So they'll get an email. Or if you really actually like the session, even just go and vote it up. Right? Because next time when we're looking at the sessions, we might go and look at, okay, what was the past session that these guys gave? How much votes did they get? What feedback did they get? So that will again help the selection committee for the coming conferences. Right? The last thing I want to leave you is I'm hoping that uh, everyone had something uh, to learn from this conference. Yes? So what are you going to do about that, right? What are you going to go back uh, and do about it? Uh, as, as Linda points out, make a small little achievable goal for yourself. Don't try and build something really ambitious. I'm going to change the world after attending this conference. That's not going to happen, except for Julian. <laughs> uh, but for the rest of us, I think we need to set small goals that are achievable. So I want you to think about a small goal that you will set for yourself that will help, uh, help you, uh, you know, put into practice the things that you've learned at the conference. Right? That, is, that is what I want you to leave this conference thinking about, uh, and hopefully that will help you. Uh, also, a lot of people have asked me that uh, how do we continue this momentum? Now we've had the conference, we enjoyed it. But what do we do after this? Do we wait till March 2015 for the next conference? What do you guys think? Create a group. <laughs> Create a group. Uh, at this point, I'm an owner of maybe 100 groups. <laughs> and a lot of them are inactive, because after a while, the, the bus dies out. And I think instead of creating new groups for every conference, there is already a pretty active group uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a group called Agile and Lean Software Development. Uh, I, I created that group uh, many years ago. I think it has over 75,000 members at this point. And it's a fairly active group. More than 300 questions are asked every single day on that group, right? So if you, if you want to go participate in that, that's a good starting point, right? Instead of spawning new, new groups, I think we can go join a group which is already fairly active. Uh, I got a thank you email from LinkedIn the other day saying this is one of the most active and well-maintained groups. So thank you for doing that, which makes me feel good that actually we have a very good community over there. So you guys could go join that, right, instead of uh, waiting for the next conference. Maybe a few of you could uh, start local user groups over here. You know, within your company, invite a few other people, you know, learn from other companies what they're doing because that will help us continue this momentum, right? We don't have to wait for the next big event. We can create smaller groups. Uh, we do run a small group called Tech Jam where we do uh, every, uh, every alternative week, we do a little session. People, whoever wants to present basically comes, uh, sends an email, we slot it in and then they come and present. And we, it's a jam, which means typically we try and have two speakers, back-to-back, uh, -back, you know, 45 minutes, 45 minute sessions. So that's something that we are doing. There are a lot of other companies that are doing. ThoughtWorks, for example, is doing uh, something uh, similar. There's, uh, sorry? Yeah, TAPS, yeah, so ThoughtWorks does that. There's a bunch of other companies, uh, Equal Experts, I think they run, uh, you know, sessions. So there are a bunch of other companies doing that. I know the, uh, you know, you guys are running some session as well. Uh, the user group that you guys run, the startup. Yeah, uh, I represent a group called Pune Open Coffee Club. It is uh, basically a network of entrepreneurs, would-be entrepreneurs, one entrepreneurs, chicken entrepreneurs, right? Someone uh, who wants to be with entrepreneurs. So all those different kinds of people. Someone who wants to become entrepreneur one of the days. And so uh, currently that group, uh, we started in 2007. And uh, just, you know, uh, very uh, informal kind of group. And uh, 
they started meeting, they started inviting some people who are slightly ahead in the game, uh, especially in the startup game. And uh, uh, the goal always has been to help the startup community, help build people start, uh, help build better startups, and uh, uh, you know have have some kind of ecosystem. Now we have grown to 14,000 plus people. A lot of them are students. So in a way, it is slightly diluted, but we are not so much worried about it. Uh, we have uh, meetings every uh, month. I mean, we try to have meetings. Sometimes we don't. But uh, that's what we do. So one of those uh, things was about Agile, because someone thought that Agile is a good, uh, it makes sense for startups. So that's where we uh, had a couple of Agile, peop uh, Agile experts come and talk about how to implement Agile in software and even non-software uh, worlds. So, I mean, there are a lot of groups in Pune, and you know, I would encourage you guys to participate in those groups. When you, uh, in future, when you want to put a proposal for the big Agile India conference, one of the things we look at is uh, what is your speaking experience, right? So we look at have you. If you presented at any any things before, so these are wonderful events where you can, you know, if you've not presented before, you can go in and at least get started. It's a small group; it, it gets you comfortable, gets you into the practice of doing that, and then you can come and present at big conferences, and it helps, you know, you to share your knowledge. So again, some of those things I would encourage you to go look at the local communities out here. If you don't find a suitable one, start one, right? Start one in your company, and then maybe spread it out. So again. Think about what you learned from this conference and how you're going to put it in practice. Think about small goals you will set or small uh, you know, ideas that you have and try and join a community. That would be my request. Okay. Thank you again for this wonderful conference and thanks for all the people. Yep. Do we have access to the presentation? So uh, our request would be to all the speakers to basically go in in the submission system and basically upload their slides over there so they can basically add the links to their presentation. And uh, we'll get the videos, and then we'll also upload it over there. So once that is done, we will send out an email to all the participants, letting them know that uh, the videos and the slides are up. Right. Slides are outside our control, so hopefully the speakers will put it up. But uh, we cannot force that. Uh, videos probably is under our control unless someone says no you don't you cannot upload my video the rest of them should go on YouTube okay any other questions people have are the, are the speakers paid are the speakers paid no none of the speakers are paid here uh, they some of their expenses are covered uh, depends on how far they're traveling and things like that so that depends, but uh, most speakers are here voluntary, uh, coming to share their knowledge. So thank you for that. Who's come here? There are a few people I know who are not volunteers, but we push them. So there are a few. Let's talk afterwards. <laughs> Yes. Uh, why do you ask that? Similar to another one, I have to decide that. Who wants to decide that? If I'm going to apply, I have to decide that. Oh, okay. So It'll if you want to... deciding factor. It will be your deciding factor. Fair enough. So we don't pay any of the speakers. Uh, we think that because this is a non-profit event, we try and run it in a fashion that we just want to break even. Whatever money comes in, basically want to spend. So if we do end up getting a lot of sponsorship, then we might do some little nice things for the speakers. But uh, generally, that's never been the case so far. <laughs> so as in not getting surplus sponsorship.